Good morning, traders. Welcome to Monday of this beautiful week. Uh, make sure to grab your morning brief levels. Those are posted on ssftg.com slash brief. You can grab all of those there for the NASDAQ and the S&P, gold, crude, euro, and Bitcoin. Uh, those are all ready to rock and roll for you. And then, of course, uh, before we jump on in, one of the first things that I like to do is double check the news, see what's going on today, see what could potentially move the markets uh, and kind of keep our eyes open so that we're not taken by surprise. Nobody likes surprises when you're in a trade uh, unless it goes in your direction. <laughs> then, then it's kind of nice. Uh, looking at the news for today, the 830 news starting off the day, New York Empire State Manufacturing Index forecast is 13.5. Previous was 10.5. Uh, that's just the medium news announcement, but that's really the biggest ones that we have today. Uh, at 1130, we have the three and six month bill auctions. Those really don't do a whole lot. Uh, at 1345, FOMC member da uh, Daly speaking. Uh, and then at 1400, we have FOMC member Clarita speaking. And then we go into the CFTC speculative net positions at 1530 going into the afternoon. None of those typically move the markets around a whole lot. It's mostly, um, well, as far as today goes, there's not really a whole lot of news that are going to move the markets around. The only thing we have is 8.30, uh, so I guess we'll see if that can procure any kind of movement. But uh, that's going to uh, kick things off for the news and all of that fun stuff. So now we can jump into the charts for today. Today is 11.16 of 2020. All right, and first up on the list is going to be the micro NASDAQ. And with the NASDAQ, overall, we had this gigantic spike to the upside over the weekend that left behind a monstrous gap that actually still hasn't been filled. Uh, as soon as the market opened up, it screamed higher. But then things started getting a little bit difficult. Buyers had a hard time breaking above the highs, and now the next spot, well, the lows. That's kind of the next area of interest, or at least the one that stands out the most. Uh, likely that if we're going to do anything right now, given this slow grind to the downside, we're probably going to keep slow grinding to the downside until we get to the bottom of this bull bar uh, or fill in the gap. Those are the major objectives at the moment. Uh, we do obviously have some falling resistance coming across the highs, which is no surprise. Uh, the market hasn't been doing anything to the upside and buyers are just getting squeezed. So realistically, looking at this move here, until we start seeing a shift in momentum, uh, I don't really have a whole lot to work with and the assumption is that sellers are going to keep going down. Maybe we have a bottom of a wedge, a three press bottom, something like that, that would push price right into R1, right at the bottom of the channel, right at the gap closure, right at the bottom uh, of the, you know, the three press wedge or uh, potentially a wider wedge that's forming here. Uh, that would be the completionary move that would kind of finish everything. And that's going to be at around, you know, the, the 945s. 950s or so where the buyers start getting interested <clears throat> and if it starts breaking through that then realistically there isn't going to be much uh, until we start digging down in towards the uh, man wow 11,880s down to the rising support so it's it's a pretty wide open door if they start breaking through that low uh, and buyers are going to be looking for a bit more continuation if they can get it going here and over to the S&P which has a relatively similar feel to the Nasdaq uh but it's staying a lot more bullish. And that's kind of the big thing that we're seeing here. Zoom in a little bit closer. Uh, we're not getting the pullback. The NASDAQ's pulling back on itself. The S&P isn't, right? The NASDAQ was having a hard time at the top of that bull bar. The S&P is using it as support. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of differences here where the S&P is actually showing a little bit more strength than the NASDAQ. Figure that one out, right? That doesn't happen very often. Uh, but the S&P definitely poised for more continuation to the upside. It's looking pretty strong. Uh, we do have some falling resistance. Uh, there's a few different ways to draw it up. Either way, it's very obviously consolidated here. Uh, and the big thing really that we're gonna need to see is what these buyers wanna do out of this because all of the support, all of the breakout movement, we have the same gapping, everything else like that. Uh, it's just the S&P is a lot more bullish. So if it does get a pullback or a trap on the lows, it's much more likely you can see that gigantic cluster of support uh, that buyers are just waiting here, uh, but with a little bit more attitude than you would expect on something like the NASDAQ because the S&P is the one that's showing all of that cumulative support coming together and it's the one showing the most strength. If I had to keep my eyes on anything, although it's not going to move as many ticks, uh, the S&P does look fairly interesting here for some strength. Over on gold next, we've got 
it's man <laughs> this thing's basically just a range i mean we can try to get a trend out of it right now but at the moment realistically it's just not doing anything the market's trying to go higher it's not working it's trying to go lower that's not really working it's kind of creating a little bit of a wedge and that might be something that we can sort of work with for now uh, but realistically, given the overall movement that we've got going on here, uh, if we zoom way, way out, it's hard to ignore that gigantic bear drop in the fact that we're right at the top of this resistance area. If the market's going to push down, this is going to be where it pushes down from. Uh, we do have higher highs, but then if we look across pretty much every indicator, we've got lower highs, right? There's major divergences cutting across all of these, uh, showing that there's some, there's some issues here, right? There's some definite issues. So where we are now, you know, gold looks great and we're holding this really nice bull move to the upside. And maybe there's even a nice bull channel that the market's bouncing off of. Uh, but I mean, all things considered, yikes. <laughs> I think if the buyers are going to take it, realistically, if the buyers are going to take it, we're going to need to get above all of this falling resistance, get this stuff out of the way so that they're able to come back and use it as support a bit later. Uh, then they've got some realistic movement to the upside potential just to retest the highs. But even then, it's... Yeah, man, I wouldn't want to hold on much above the highs, maybe back up towards 1900s. That's about it. But top side's just feeling a little bit heavy. We are nice and low, though. So if the buyers can start breaking out, they've got a shot. If the sellers break through, then it's going to be an open door down to the 1874s, potentially even lower to retest the 1860s, that, that big breakout retest point of the falling resistance earlier. Crude oil next up on the list and kind of grinding its way higher. Yet another market showing some weekend gapping and unfilled gapping at that. Everything is pointed to the upside so far this morning, but uh, crude oil kind of grounded out initially, right? We've, we had that initial just gross ugh, of price action migrating its way through all of this. But then there was a nice breakout move that added a lot of confirmation. And with that continuation to the upside, what happened? Well, it fell flat on its face. Uh, it came back down towards the area of support, but the buyers picked it back up again. And when it came time for the sellers to defend, so far they're failing. Now, seeing how we kind of rallied up and then juked right back down again, it's going to be difficult to break above this high. But if buyers are able to get that break going, then it's got more continuation because realistically, there isn't much else to hold the market down until it starts chugging all the way back up towards the 42s. So where we are, this is a definite zone that's poised to try to get a breakout continuation to the upside. Uh, the only things that we're going to have to worry about if we zoom out a little bit further, maybe three press tops. Um, but that's about it. It's a wide open door here. Uh, so buyers are going to be looking for some juice to the upside, and it's looking pretty strong. Maybe a pullback uh, on the open might be a little more beneficial where these, where these two kind of intersect together. That creates a very nice congestion area. We've got R1 previous structural support, the bottom of the wedge, the retest is support. Everything kind of stacks together there at around the 4070s. So that's going to be the big zone of interest if it can get that pullback. Next up is going to be the euro, and we're at least trying to get out of this range-bound mess here. I mean, realistically, the market does still have the upward angle. It's still grinding its way up. Everything is looking fairly bullish from that perspective. Uh, we haven't really gotten back to the wider channel yet, which would be really nice. Uh, and if we zoom out a little bit further, we can see that, you know, all things considered, the breakout move that happened above the high of that major whip well, they're holding it, right? They've got a three press bottom, held a higher low, and now we're trying to continue back to the upside. So everything is looking really good uh, for the euro upward continuation. Might be a wider channel here as well. Either way, uh, buyers are looking for more continuation. And the fact that it's pulling back a little bit here might be the opportunity that buyers have been looking for uh, to try to find a way into this. I wish it would have pulled back maybe a little bit deeper. And I don't like the fact that it V-topped out of there. That's not great. Uh, which kind of leads me to believe that a deeper move down is still potentially kind of necessary. We got to kind of come back to those zones of support, right? Get back to the pivot point, get back to falling resistance, now support, get back to rising support, get back to that rising channel that we were talking about earlier. Everything's stacking up just a little bit lower uh, towards the 1.1835s, 1.183s, somewhere down there, uh, a little bit more than where it is now. And finally, going over to Bitcoin and seeing a great continuation rally to the upside. This is what buyers needed, right? We had that breakout, we had the continuation, 
but they needed to stick the landing. And well, I think I think this move up is good enough to say they stuck the landing. Uh, we've now got a very nice rising support that's grinding along with price and holding things up. Uh, it's very aggressive. Obviously, the angle of this is very high, and more likely than not, it's eventually going to give us a deeper pullback, and that deeper pullback would likely be towards the previous level of support that broke, uh, tried to act as resistance and failed. Well, what better place to come back to? Uh, along with that, there could be that slightly wider area of support if you're drawing it off of the extremes uh, or the really wide uh, this wide will went really far down there uh, not necessarily looking for it to get down there but way over here starting to get later to tonight that might be a zone of interest uh, where it stands right now it appears as though buyers are trying to get the breakout continuation move the pullbacks were relatively deep and now they're getting they're getting very shallow uh, so these shallow pullbacks are showing that bulls are still pretty aggressive, and we're probably going to see those shallow pullbacks continue, uh, with the next zone of interest being around 16,300 uh, for another continuation pop up. If it does want to pull back further, though, then we might be able to enact some of those bigger zones. All right, well, that's going to do it for today. Like we always say, stay safe out there, keep those stops in play, and let those winners run. Have a fantastic trading day today, and we will see you all in the room or tomorrow morning. Thanks.